Hey everybody, so today I am going to cook a beef wellington. So um, I went to the fresh market in Evansville, uh, Cruz, uh, as a nice young man who uh, we really worked on picking out a, uh, the, the tenderloin that we liked. Uh, that's Muffin. Muffin likes tenderloin brown. So anyway, so you have a whole tenderloin. It would have been about this big. Uh, what we did is we took the fat end of the tenderloin and um, got it sliced into steaks. That's what uh, my awesome butcher crews hooked up for me. And then um, what happens is, is it then trails off. A whole loin will trail off to a thinner point. And we basically, so we just cut that off and took that part and ground it up into some ground uh, tenderloin. So we got some ground tenderloin. We have the whole roast for the beef wellington that we'll do here later in the video. And then, um, honestly, because I'm not going to get to these in a while, that's why I have them on this parchment paper because I'm going to take them to my deep freezer and I'm going to flash freeze them and then individually package them to cook later. So anyway, so uh, we'll see how this goes. All right, guys, we're going to start on the beef wellington. The first thing to do is to take this uh, gorgeous um, beef tenderloin. I actually have two of them for today because I'm feeding a lot of people. Uh, look at that. Look at that. All right? I need the salt and pepper first. Look at that one. Jeez, Lapeet. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Salt and pepper. While this is, while I'm doing this, just to let you know, I have uh, preheated, I have preheated a cast iron skillet um, because my, my goal is to sear the heck out of this beef. Screaming hot pan. I need oil that's not olive oil because I'm gonna need a higher smoke point because it is about to get incredibly hot. We're looking for it to immediately start to do what it's doing right now. Next up, we're gonna take the, one of the fillets. Set it in. Oh, there you go. So we use the back of the pan to sear off the back of it. It's gonna allow us to cook this uh, more quickly. Without cooking. We're going to brush this with some spicy mustard and we're going to repeat this um, on my other cuts. So, all right, so we've seared them off, and all we're doing now is you, as soon as you get them off of the Grill searing them up, you need to put some uh, horseradish uh, spicy mustard on them so that as they cool down, uh, the meat will draw in the heat from the horseradish and the mustard and we'll be in good shape. So on to the next one. All right, so next up, we're gonna take these nice, uh, they're organic, I don't guess they have to be. Um, I wash them, I would recommend doing that if you buy whole organic mushrooms. Uh, baby button, or something button, I don't know, it said something about a button. And I'm gonna put them in my uh, food processor. We'll take some salt. There we go. A bit of garlic. All right, we're gonna take it over here to the food processor, close the lid, and we are going to, um, I think, All right, next up, now that we've gotten this all pureed, or whatever, not pureed, but crushed up. Again, I'm not a chef. We're gonna put this in a hot, dry pan. So, uh, no oil, as you can see. Uh, this is an important step, because what we're trying to do here is to get the moisture out of the mushrooms. Because if you leave the mushroom in the mushrooms, it'll ruin your puff pastry. So if you look at that, that's the water 
starting to come out of the mushroom. That's what we're looking for, guys. That is what we are looking for. All right, so the little thin layer of prosciutto ham. It is most certainly plenty salty enough, so we don't need to add any salt. We're just looking to add some pepper. We're going to take the mushrooms that we have cooked the moisture out of. So next up, we're gonna take our tenderloin, our filet of mignon. We're gonna set it in there. We'll take it and kind of pull it up and back. You're going to tightly roll the filet. I want to pinch the ends. Again, I'm working with just great value um, cling wrap, so. All right, so this is step one. Now that we've done this, we're going to take this and we're going to set it in the refrigerator to rest. All right, so I've just taken this out of the refrigerator. It's been setting now for um, a while because I actually forgot about the fact that the puff pastry would need to thaw. So remember that everybody, unless you're making your puff pastry fresh, you will need to make sure you let it go. It's time to get the final product out. So here we go. Look at those. There it is. There's the beef Wellington. We're gonna let it rest and we'll slice into it here in a second. All right, here we go, the moment of truth. Okay. All right, it's got a nice hard crunch to it. So I'm excited to try it out. Here we go. Woo-wee, look at that. They were perfect. 